Chapter 7 is Best Practices on Employee Diversity. In this particular chapter, there will be seven benchmark items in terms of best practices in business ethics. Benchmark item number 25, a specific person, such as a diversity officer, is accountable for diversity issues. So the United States, as well as the entire world, is becoming more diversified and more complex. And because of the diversity, people do have biases. And the biases are often in favor of their own particular race, their own gender, their own religion. And within your organization, you want to make sure that everybody feels welcomed. That all employees, no matter what their race, religion, or gender, feels welcomed in the organization. And you want to make sure that all customers and all suppliers, no matter what their race, religion, or gender happens to be, feel welcomed by the organization. Because you really want to create a welcoming organization and a welcoming community within your organization. It's one thing to say that in this organization, everybody is responsible for diversity. But unfortunately, sometimes when everybody is responsible, nobody is really ultimately responsible, and then things do not get done. So you want to make sure, even if everybody is responsible, that people can say Mary or Tom is ultimately responsible to make sure that we have a diverse workforce and that things go smoothly on diversity factors. Benchmark number 26. Our employees reflect the gender, ethnic, racial, and religious diversity of qualified job applicants in the community. So every organization is located in a different community. If your organization is located in an all-white community, you would expect to have all-white employees. If your organization is in an African-American community, you would expect to have all African-American employees. That would be very, very natural to, to occur. If your organization is in a diverse community, then you should expect to have diversity within the organization. So you want to make sure that the profile of your organization matches the profile of your community based upon skills, education, and other factors that are relevant to the job. And this is essential to make sure you avoid lawsuits in terms of discrimination. Benchmark item number 27, managers support our diversity initiatives. There is nothing more disheartening to be working on a diversity workshop, to leave the workshop and to hear a manager say, don't waste your time in doing those workshops anymore. That just kills the entire importance of the diversity workshop. So you want to make sure that all managers are bought into diversity training ahead of time, not after the, not after the matter. And to get them bought into it, the managers need to see that once again, like ethics training, there's a bottom line impact to this. Companies and organizations that manage diversity and excel in this area, they excel in terms of profitability and revenue. Mismanaging diversity results in a lot of cost that is a drain on the organization. And you want to be clear that the managers are aware of that, that they see that this is essential for creating a high-level, high-performance organization. Benchmark item number 28. Flexible work schedules and cafeteria-style benefit plans meet the needs of our diverse workforce. People of different religions have different religious holidays. People in different stages of life have different needs. If you're a young family and you have young children, you might need to take time off to take care of the kids when they get sick. Otherwise, your sick child goes to a daycare and then all those kids get sick. And when you're age in life, you need to take care of your aging parents. So you might need flexible time to take off to take care of your, your aging parent. So you want to make sure that you have a flexible benefit plan as well as flexible work hours so that people can feel as though that they're being respected for who they are and for their particular life situation. Benchmark item number 29, our promotion performance appraisal, and downsizing criteria do not discriminate against diverse employee groups. We've improved a lot in the United States over time in terms of 
racial hirings, and gender hirings. But sometimes you hear about these glass ceilings. So you've done a good job in re outreach with job applicants. You've done a nice job in hiring. But sometimes you'll hear women saying, there are no men, there are no women in upper level managers, only men are there. Or you'll hear African Americans will say that there's no African Americans in upper level management. In situations like that, there may be this invisible glass ceiling. This doesn't mean your organization is racist. It may be a bias you're just not aware of. So you want to do an analysis and make sure that the profile of your upper level managers also reflect the profile in your community, as well as a profile within your organization. And you want to see is there a obstacles in the way for some people some race, some gender, some religions to make it to the top of the organization. Because you want to make sure that the highly competent people make it to the top and there are highly competent people in all races, ethnicities, and genders and religions. In terms of downsizing, there's a problem that occurs in some organizations. Let's say historically the organization was primarily white male. Then they reached out to the organization and you hired women and you hired African-Americans. And now it's time to downsize because it changes in the market. It's not your fault. It's just markets go in cycles. If you use seniority as your only criteria for layoffs, then you're going to create damage for all of the good accomplishments you made in terms of affirmative action and other outreach programs. Because when you do seniority, the people with seniority will be the white males, and the people lacking seniority will be the women or the African Americans that were recently hired. You want to make sure that there is a merit criteria in terms of your lay layoffs and that you keep the most meritorious and best performers in the organization, and the ones that are dismissed are the ones that are not performing well. It shouldn't be due to race or gender or due even with longevity. Longevity matters and you do want to re reward loyal employees, but you want to make sure that when you do your layoffs, you're not shooting yourself in the foot by destroying all the good work you've done and in reaching out and employing people of diverse backgrounds. Benchmark item number 30. Diversity training workshops address self-awareness, employee differences, and employee commonalities. I'm a white male, so I have this natural bias toward white men because I hang out with white men. I see the world from the view of a white male's vantage point. I want to be aware of that bias. I'm not saying this is bad on this way. This is just the way that I've evolved sociologically, and it's a very natural way to evolve, but it does create damage for the organization if I allow these natural biases I have to get in the way of doing the best and promoting the best people. So I want to make sure that I've got my biases, I'm aware of them, and that I take them into consideration that I don't want them to get in the way of making the decisions that are best for the organization. All employees are different, and we are different according to, say, our gender, our race, and our religion. It's important to highlight these differences. It's an organization, some organizations will do workshops, will everybody from India will talk about what it was like growing up in India or what it's like growing up in an Indian family or they'll have meals that day that are all foods from India. So that's fantastic. You're, you're making clear that we do have these differences and you're respecting and you're honoring these differences. However, you also want to show that as human beings, we have a lot in common. So you don't just want to mention our differences. You want to be clear that we are different, but you also want to end the workshop by saying what we have in common. And what we all have in common is that we all work for the same organization. What we all have in common is that we're all human beings. So you want to end with that sense of commonality. Otherwise, people think we're differences, and that sometimes will create alienation at work. So you want to say, yes, we respect our differences, and yes, we respect how we're also common. Benchmark item number 31. Achieving diversity goals are part of a manager's performance evaluation. And this is the last benchmark 
for Chapter 7 on Employee Diversity. If employee diversity really matters, it ought to be part of the performance evaluation of managers. You set the goals for diversity, and then you evaluate, did we accomplish these goals? If the manager did, you praise the manager and you say, great job. If the manager came up short, find out why the manager came up short, and then develop strategies to transform that weakness into a strength. Managers and all human beings, we pay attention to what's being measured. So if diversity matters, we want to make sure we measure the outcomes of our diversity efforts.